Hi, this is Hongshu from MotionCircles.com. Today I'll be teaching you how to achieve this animation in After Effects. I've attached the working file in the description. Feel free to download it and follow along. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Now let's get started with typography animation. We have a new composition that's named main comp. And then right now I only have a orange background. I went ahead and did some preparation for this project. So basically in order to animate the changing in the typography or the font, we need to, first of all, select a couple different fonts, and then we're going to morph between those different fonts. Now, if I go to the project panel, I have my text composition here. For the letter B, I already have seven different font that I selected for this letter B. So basically the animation is gonna be switching between these seven different typefaces. First of all, in order to do that, let's animate the B first. We need to go into each one, right click, create shapes from text. And then we're gonna do the same thing for all the layers here. Basically we're creating shapes from all these different text layers. And now let's select all the text layers, select label groove, and now we can click on the hide button, shy button to hide all the text. Now we only have the shape layers that's left in the view. So what I wanna do is select all of them, go to the search bar, put in path, and then we need to basically add a keyframe on all these path properties of all the layers. Now we have a keyframe on all the path properties. Let's animate from this first B here. This is gonna be our main layer. All we need to do is to copy the keyframe under the path property and paste it onto this original layer. So to do that, let's select the three keyframe on the second typefaces, command C copy, and then select the path property of the first layer. Go forward 10 frames, paste it in, command V, now we have a morphing between the two different typefaces. And you can see right now the morphing is not very smooth, but we're going to do something later on to make it smoother. Right now we have the morphing between the first typeface and the second typeface. And then we want the second typeface to hold there for 10 frames. So go for 10 frames again, and then use the same keyframe that we copied and copy it again. So it's going to stay there for 10 frames. And now after staying there for 10 frames, it's gonna to change to the next typefaces. So I can turn off this one and then copy the keyframes on the third typeface and then go forward 10 frames, paste it in. Before I paste in the keyframe, I need to select the path property first. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to paste it on there. Command V for pasting in and then go forward 10 frames, stay there for 10 frames. So these two sets of keyframes are the same and then these two sets of keyframe are the same now we just need to go to the different typefaces a new one and then copy those select the path property go forward paste it in that's good we need to we just need to repeat the process we already copied this one so this one is going to be the next one select the path property go forward I'm using the shift command shift red arrow to go forward 10 frames. I already have this one. And then I need to select these ones. Go back to the first layer, command shift red arrow, go forward 10 frames, paste it two times. And then the last batch, which is the last typeface, we just need to go forward and then select them, command V, paste them in, and then go forward to paste in the beginning keyframes so the typeface is going to go back to the original so that we can complete a loop after we have the keyframe this is the animation we have and now we just need to select everything right click go to keyframe velocity let's change the velocity to 95 percent so that we got more speed between in between the morphing it's going to give us a smoother transition between the morphing next thing i need to put this letter in the center of the composition let's select the layer we can actually hide these layers since we don't need them anymore. And then we can go to the align tool, put it right in the center. And now I just need to modify these 
path property a bit more in order to put this letter at the absolute center of my composition. So for this B, I just need to move it down and then copy them, paste it in over here. And then for this typeface here, make sure it's in the center. Copy those keyframes, paste those in. And then this one seems like it's in the center, should be fine. This one, I need to move it to the left more. Copy and then paste it in. And then this one, move it over to the left, move it up a bit more and then copy this one. For this one, looks fine to me. So that's good. You can see the B is morphing right in the center of the composition. In order to make the morphing even smoother, we can do a scale change for the letter. If I hit Shift S to pull up the scale property, I can do a scale change in between. And over here, I'm gonna add two keyframes, which is both at 100%. And in the center here, one is morphing. I can change this scale to 40% to make it smaller, less noticeable. Select all three keyframes, right click, go to keyframe velocity, and then we can change the influence to 85%. And now if I copy three keyframes and paste them in, whenever there is a change in the typeface, so this is what we get. And now we can preview this one. It's gonna zoom in a bit more when it's changing. And this is the effect that we get. That's good. And that's the animation for our letter B. Let's go back to the main composition. We can drop the letter B animation inside our composition. Let's preview this one. So that looks pretty good. And now let's do the next word, which is the O. Let's do the same thing. I'll repeat the process the same as how we did the B. We're gonna work on the O animation, create shapes from text, and then select all the text, hide them. Let's go back to the first letter and then select all of them, go to search for path property. Make sure we add a keyframe on all the path property of all the layers. That's good. And then go to the first one. We just need to copy these keyframes and paste them onto the first layer under the path property and make sure we hold them for 10 frames for each change. So I got this one and then copy these two keyframes. Go forward 10 frames and hold there for 10 frames. Now I have these two keyframes. Hold there. Okay, we copied everything, go forward 10 frames and paste in the first one to put it on the, in the last as well. And this is gonna be our old animation, select all of them, right click, keyframe velocity. Let's change this one to 95% so that the animation is faster. Let's play the animation. That looks fine, let's put it in the center of the frame and make sure we hide all these layers. Click on the shadow button. Let's turn on the ruler and drag a ruler here. Hit U on the keyboard. Let's see, this O is moved, so we need to put it in the center, move it back, copy it, and then paste it in the holding keyframes over here. And then over here, I still need to move it to the left, okay. So this one looks fine to me. This one, we need to move it to the left. That's good. This one, move it to the left and then move it up a bit more. That's good. This one is in the center, should be fine. And this one looks good to me. So this is gonna be our O and then we want to copy the scale change. Remember we did a scale change for the B, so hit Shift S to pull up the scale property and then hit Command V to paste in the scale change. That looks good. 
Let's go back to the main composition and then I'll drop in the O here. Now we have the B and O. They're animating between different tie faces. That looks good. However, I want to offset them a bit more so that we're not starting with the same font for both letters. Let's go forward 20 frames and then I'll use the second face of the O to be the first tie face. So I'll cut the layer and then move the layer to the front so that the O is going to show like this. That looks good. And then we can just use the same way to animate the L and D, exact same way that I showed in the first two composition. Let's drop in the L and D since I already have it. And this is going to be my L. And this is going to be my D. And for the D, I need to offset it as well, just like the O. So I'll make sure the D looks like this. Put everything in the center. Let's preview the animation for now. Now that we have all four letters. That's pretty good. I like the change in the typeface. Now I just need to change the color. So let's go to the color palette that we selected. And then let's go to the B. Make sure we go inside the effects and presets and look for the fill effect. Let's change the B to this color here. And the O can stay in the yellow color. For the L, let's do a dark gray color like this. Now we can turn off the color palette. This is going to be our animation with the color on. I think I would like to have this L on top of the D so that the L is showing over here. Yeah, I like that. That looks pretty good. Next, we can add some textures and noise. Go to layer, new, and then we can create an adjustment layer. Name this one noise, and then let's go to effects and presets. Let's search for noise effects. If I zoom in, I can change the percentage to 10% or maybe 15%. And now you can see there is a bit of noise that we added to the overall composition. It's going to add some subtle noises to the animation, which is looking pretty good. And then let's also add some more hand-drawn effect for this. So let's search for turbulence displays and let's add it to the noise layer. With the turbulence display, as you can see, we are actually displacing the overall composition. Since we have the effect on the adjustment layer, it's going to affect everything underneath it. So for the amount, let's do 10. And then for the size, let's do 15. For the displacement, let's do a horizontal displacement. If I zoom in, you can see there is subtle changes over here. And then for the evolution, let's put on a keyframe, hit you on the keyboard. Let's try to put 30. It's going to give us some animation on the turbulence. Now this is what our animation is going to look like with the turbulence effect. And the next thing I want to add some texture. Let's go to my assets. I already have a texture animated. If I go inside this composition, it's pretty simple. I only animated the rotation property of this texture with hold keyframes and it's basically just rotating in random fashion and then I use the loop out expression to make sure it's animating all the time. Let's drop this texture inside our composition and now we need to change the blending mode to darkened. Good. And then I need to make sure to use the letter as the alpha mat for my texture so that I don't want my texture to show up on the background. I only want them to show up within the text. So I need to group these four texts, command shift C, name this one animated text. And then I'll use go to texture layer, track mat, and then use the animated text to be the alpha mat. And also make sure we need to turn on the animated text again after we apply the alpha mat. Let's see the animation here. That looks pretty fun. See that? The subtle texture within the copy. Now the last thing we want to add, we want to add some scribble line animations in order to make this one more fun. I already have my scribble here. You can see if I go inside this layer, it's basically just a path that I drew with some trim path animation so that this line here 
it's drawing on and then drawing off. So this is a simple animation with trim pads. I got two different kinds of scribble. One is an arrow going to the right, and the other one is some curved lines going outward. We want to drop these two onto my animation here. First of all, let's drop this scribble one here underneath the noise. And then we'll put it on the corner over here, and then we'll, we'll drop the scribble two over here underneath. And then let's duplicate scribble two, rotate it 180 degree. It's going the other side, drop it over here on the top and then offset the timeline so that they're not coming up at the same time. That's good. And then let's duplicate the scribble one again, move the layer backward. We can just randomly, you know, change the rotation and change the size, make it smaller, maybe put it over here. Something like this. Let's do the scribble two again, move it backward, and then let's change the rotation so that it's going with the same direction as this slanted O typeface. Let's copy this one again move it the other way around, and then now it can go with the same direction at this D here, offset the keyframe. That looks pretty fun. Let's see the animation. I feel like we need one more duplication for the first scribble. Put it all the way back, change the rotation, maybe drop it over here. this. That's nice. All right, that's our final animation. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. We will be publishing more videos like this every single week. Please leave me a like and consider subscribing to the channel. We also have a free exclusive community where motion designers hang out and learn from each other. Click the link in the description to join our exclusive community. Hope to see you in the next video.